is going on guys, Jack here and welcome back to another episode of the Portsmouth Career Mode series. This is episode number 29 and we're going to be starting today's episode off guys a little bit different than normal. We're going to have a little look at the scout report and some of the players that I have actually been scouting. We're scouting our scout future star actually which uh, of course is a little bit weird but uh, you can actually do that and scout any player in your youth academy. I may do a video on it if you don't know how to do it already guys. It's very very simple. But if you do want me to do a video on that, I can easily do it if that's something that you guys will be interested in. But we can have a little look at some of the players we're going in for. Primarily, they're right backs I'm going in for because, of course, that is the main area that I do want to strengthen. But if there's any pre-contract signings that you think I should sign, do let me know in the comments down below. And I will be open to trying to get them. Bear in mind, I will not have that much money to spend. Ivan there, the Spanish right back from Levante, is probably my best option at the moment. At getting a pre-contract right back because I had a look at the other ones they're on ridiculous wages some of them some of them are on upwards of 40 grand a week which is absolutely ridiculous and of course I will not be able to afford that it's as simple as that I'm not going to be able to afford those higher wages I'd probably be able to afford maybe 15k maximum and that will probably be the maximum that I'll be able to afford depending on who I sell in the transfer window, we'll have to wait and see if we've got any funds available. At the moment, we have got nothing. We are skint. We have no money available. So if we're going to be bringing any pre-contract signings in, we're going to have to A, either sell players or B, basically request some money from the board. Which is most likely not going to happen because every single time I do that... Well, they just say no, pretty much. Every single time that I'm trying to get these um, trying to get these extra funds into the club, they're just like, no. But we're having a little look at the scout report here and some of the youth players that we have been scouting. We do sign Freddie Spur there, a nice-looking striker, I do believe he was. And for the other players, I do believe we just rejected a lot of them. Or no, we have actually scouted them further, even though their potentials are diabolical as well as their overalls. I think I um, must have forgotten to remove them from the scouting report because they are just god awful. I don't know why I'd even want them in there. I don't even know if I thought they'd improve. I have no idea what I was doing. But anyway, we're going to the first game of the episode here. And it is going to be against Chesterfield. But I do want to talk about something very quickly. And that is going back to the pre-contract signings. I want to ask you guys that have your own career mode. What is your favourite pre-contract signing that you've made in your career modes? Let me know in the comments down below. It would be interesting to see because I know my favourite one so far is Hong Chul. He's been an absolute monster. Funzo Ojo is also pretty decent as well as he gets onto the ball here in this match. And has a cracking long shot. What a good effort that was from Funzo Ojo in the 20th minute. But unfortunately, it wasn't on target. It was very close though and a good effort from him nonetheless. And unfortunately in this match, well, it was a pretty stale match I have to admit. It was very, very stale up until the 60th minute where they would get a really good chance here and well it's as simple as this you're not going to be stopping that or are you going to be stopping that it's it's a difficult one really because you look at the replay it's a bit of a stupid replay angle i don't know what that's all about but you see it hits the keeper scott loach and goes into the back of the net it looked like an absolute wonder goal from the angle that we first looked it at but of course the goalkeeper was the one that made the mistake. He completely messed that one up and it was too powerful for him to handle. And in the end, they make it 1-0 in the 83rd minute and that was bad news for us because we really needed to get back into this game. It's as simple as that. And the only way we were going to do it is go all out attacking here. A really good chance as Danny Wall gets played through here. He runs all the way through the defence and really... He should have done a lot better in that situation. That was a really good chance to level it up here. And maybe he stage a late comeback. But unfortunately, we end up dropping all three points. We don't even get one point from this match. And against Chesterfield, that is a little bit disappointing, I will be honest. One of the weakest sides in the Football League 1. And I would have expected to come away with a bit of a better result. As you can see there, 10 shots and 6 on target. They only had one shot on target and scored it. But that is FIFA sometimes for you. And that was actually on Legendary. So clearly I am starting to create a few more chances in the game. But unfortunately I'm just not being able to take them. And that does mean that Warsaw are closing the gap on us to 6 points now. Or is it 6 points? No, I think that's 4 points actually. Um, I can't even count. I don't even know. What's uh, 43 and 38? Uh, let me just work this out. Yes, yeah, 5 points, not 6 points or 8 points. So they've closed it down to five points, which is quite scary as we go into this match here against Hartlepool. Because I would have known that we really need to pick up a win here. Because Hartlepool, 
are at the bottom of the table. There's no excuse for losing this match. There's no excuse for even drawing this match. I'd be very, very worried if we don't pick up a decent result in this match because Hartlepool, they've had a bad start to the season. And in real life, I don't think they're doing too well either. I think they just lost to Blythe Spartans, I think it is, in the FA Cup. So that is a little bit embarrassing for them being beaten by a team that's three divisions above them, or sorry, below them, I should say. Blythe Spartans beat Hartlepool, and that was yesterday, I do believe, when I'm recording this. If you didn't watch it, I do recommend you go back and uh, watch that match because, you know, just watching the highlights even, it was a really incredible match, some fantastic goals in the match, and certainly one that I would recommend watching. A really, really uh, interesting story behind the whole team of Blythe Spartans as well. And that is something that I do recommend you guys going and watching if that does interest you. But uh, anyway, we're going back into this episode. You can see that we did waste a chance there in the 17th minute. They get a chance there themselves, Hartlepool, in the 30th minute. And unfortunately for them, they put the header wide. A very good chance there, but unfortunately for them, they couldn't quite put it into the back of the net. And make it 1-0 to them. And really, they were putting on a lot of pressure. And in the 64th minute here, well, they were finding a lot of space. Our defence was just not being able to deal with it. it. This is just legendary all over. We're not able to get the ball away until they, they even have a shot at the goalkeeper. And that is when you know that your defending is just terrible. You really do know that. And especially on legendary. That is all the legendary AI do. They just keep hold of the ball. They don't let you have it, have it whatsoever. They don't give up possession. They are just so precise. They are so good. And unfortunately for us, we end up... It's not re the worst result in the world, yes. But against the side that's bottom of the table in 20th place, I would have expected a lot better. I know it is on Legendary. I'm still yet to get used to it. You can see I'm not really having too many chances in these games. And the ones that I do have, I really have to take them because chances are going begging and I'm not taking them. It's as simple as that. You can see that the gap is now close to four points. And unfortunately in that match, Hong Chul did get injured and he will be out for three weeks. But I don't think he is actually out for three weeks because he does come back in the next episode, I do believe. But still, it is a little bit annoying that our first choice right back does get injured, even though he's a left back. I've been playing him at right back because I've been giving Ben Purrington a little bit of a chance. But this is a good chance for the man, Jason Gurria, to prove his worth. Get back into the side and show why he's better than Hong Chul at the right back position. I mean, it must be a bit demoralising for him. A player that plays as a left back has replaced him at the right back spot. I mean, how demoralising is that? He certainly voices anger and hopefully he can do well in these matches because he is a good player. He showed that last season, but I just haven't been giving him the game time. It's as simple as that. As we go into this match here against Yeovil, really, really poor defending here as they pick up the ball and unfortunately in the sixth minute they get the first goal of the game from the first chance of the game and really that is just shocking defending we haven't even got a win in this uh, episode i do believe apart from the one that we simmed but all of the played games that we've actually played we haven't actually won a single one of them yet so this is just a diabolical episode isn't it we haven't been playing well whatsoever and it's all my fault really i can't be blaming anyone else but in the 14th minute here we got a good chance tartar cuts inside and he's got the pace to be absolutely everyone but unfortunately his shot hits the post i was having one of those days on fifa one of those games as well where i just I had so many chances, but they just went begging. It's as simple as that. My finishing wasn't as good, but this chance here was very good for us as we managed to level it up in the 64th minute. What a good goal that is from Morpay. Doesn't need a fake shot. Doesn't need any skill. Just the agility to get past the oval defence. Just, I, I don't even know what I did there. I think I did a bit of LCRT dribbling. Just a little burst of pace. Got round the defender and we managed to slot it into the back of the net. With Neil Morpay and our saviour, Neil Morpay, our new number nine, makes it 1-1 and levels up the game here. Gives us a little bit of hope in this match because we were playing terrible in defence, in midfield. We weren't creating anything up until that point and we actually get a, what I would say is a bit of an undeserved goal. But unfortunately, again, they go through and yeah. I'm speechless. I'm actually speechless right now. In the 82nd minute, they score an absolute blinder. What a good goal that is by Sean Bat, I do believe. Or it might be a different Yeovil Town player. I'm not sure. But nevertheless, what a great first-time strike that is. I cannot say anything more about that. That is absolutely incredible. 
And what a goal that is to get Yeovil the three points. They are doing pretty well this season, I do believe. And they get the three points there against us. And unfortunately, despite having more shots than them, I was... Well, you can see that I was very, very angry. The way I was ferociously... Um, going left and right and left and right over the stats. I was very, very angry from that match because I deserve I thought that we did deserve a little bit better. But we are going to end this episode off, guys, by having a little look at the squad report. Seeing the players that have grown for this month, Yoon Young Sun is up to 69 overall. Blackett is up to 68 overall, which is good. And if you do want to see any players that have grown for this month, then of course, feel free to pause the video. We've got a lot of growth. Jordan Ibe is up to 71 overall. We've got a lot of players in the first team that's already over 70. Danny Ward, it's only been like two or three months and he's already gone up by plus three. Same with Maxwell Corner. He is showing great potential. So I need to give him a little bit more game time so he actually fulfills his potential status because I do believe he is going to be a very crucial player for us in a few years to come. Maybe not at the moment because he's not getting into the side, but I'm sure in a few years to, to come, maybe in the Barclays Premier League, he could be a real hero for us. Hong Chu, despite getting injured, he's got some godly technical stats. Oh my goodness. You can go back and have a look at them because they are just ridiculous. They speak for themselves. He is just an incredible player. But this is going to be the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed. And if you have enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As it really does help out my channel, guys. But other than that, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.